Energy, the worst performer this week, down almost 4%, despite crude oil rising today for the first time, though, in nine sessions. It's the only sector with a negative year-to-date performance. For more, let's bring in Halima Croft. She's RBC Capital Markets Managing Director and Global Head of Commodity Strategy. Halima, it seems like we're so far away from that big event that happened in Saudi Arabia no. with the attack. And here it's like it's over. I mean, is, was that a signal that this could happen again or should we be relieved? How do we read the action that's happened since then? I mean, I think the market is very complacent. I think the fact that Saudi Arabia was so quick to restore the production. I mean, this was a massive outage. 5.7 million barrels taken offline by this really extraordinary combination attack involving cruise missiles and drones. And yet Saudi brought it all back so much quicker than the market anticipated. And now a lot of people are saying, one, this is probably the peak. And two, any other outage will just be similarly transitory. I think we're probably looking at more disruption. I don't think the Iranians have shown any indication that they're going to back off because they're really seeking sanctions relief. But for now, the market is back focusing on concerns about demand growth slowdown, about a recession. That is front and center. And so we've had all summer the trade war sort of battling it out with the shooting war in the Middle East. And we're back to the trade war and economic concerns being at the forefront for investors. I was going to ask you what carries more weight, global growth concerns or geopolitical upset? And it seems like the market just voted. The market just voted. I mean, the market is essentially saying for now, we are going to be concerned about particularly what happens in China. China is the largest importer of crude oil. It's not surprising that crude oil reacts very negatively to trade war concerns. You know, what I think is interesting is five years ago, we had ISIS overrun Fallujah and Ramadi in Iraq, far away from the production zones, oil was above 100. So it also tells a story about the American energy story, because now we have this resource here. And I think for a lot of people, they say it doesn't matter anymore what happens in Saudi Arabia. And I think that's a hard position for the Saudis, because on the one hand, they want to say, look how resilient we are. But they also want to say to the world, this is something you should all be concerned about. And for a lot of the world right now, they're saying, we can absorb an attack like this. We're not feeling the economic effects. Is the market purely anticipating demand weakness? In other words, is there any evidence of it at this point that, in fact, consumption has slowed down? I mean, people are looking at things that concern them, like auto sales in China. I mean, they are really concerned about the manufacturing sector in China. And so I think we will have to see where we end up in year end in terms of demand growth numbers. People are taking them down. But I think right now we're in a situation where sentiment is really, really driving this market right now. Wait, so are, are the days of $100 a barrel oil over, just given where the supply is here and global growth worries? I think, I think we wrote this piece over the summer called Broken Barometer, essentially saying that oil is now a lagging indicator of unrest in the Middle East. The question is, is 80 the new 100 in terms of the political risk ceiling? I think we just have to wait and see. I mean, I think the attacks we've seen have been unprecedented from the middle of May. We've had, you know, six tankers attacked. We've had literally a cruise missile sent into one of the most important energy facilities in the world. And the market is like, ah, two weeks later, not a big deal. The question is, if we have more attacks, does that change the psychology of this market? We have to wait and see. All right. Good having you. Thanks. Thank you.